We have here a helical spring that is attached to a speaker that's driven by a power amplifier, uh, which is driven in turn by a LabQuest that is uh, running a function generator. I don't know if you can see that for sure, but uh, we have a function generator here. And what this does is if we drive at certain frequencies, um, and I'll pick for right now 10.25 hertz, and there's a reason behind that that I'll explain in a second. If we drive at that particular frequency, then we get these nice patterns, which I'm gonna show with a piece of paper. If I drag this paper down, I see it bounces a lot until I get to a node, at which point it doesn't bounce a lot. So you can possibly even see the node there. And then if I go to an anti-node, it bounces a lot. So node, anti-node, and there's actually another node down here. And so it turns out we can actually get two types of patterns here. The first is a typical node-node pattern, where we have a node at the top and a node at the bottom. And that works the same as standing waves on a string. And so you end up with an equation that's the uh, harmonic, the nth harmonic is equal to n over 2, the frequency rather of the nth harmonic is equal to n over 2 times the square root of k over the mass of the spring. Then we can also get um, node anti node patterns. For example, if I go to approximately 7.5 hertz, now. What we're going to see is a node right around here somewhere. It take a little bit to stabilize. Let's see, yep, that's it right there. Versus an anti-node here and an anti-node here. So we actually get anti-nodes in two places and a node right here. So note that we have about two-thirds of the length and about one-third of the length here. So this actually acts like a node antinode wave. So this would be just like a tube that is closed on one end and open on the other. And so the formula for that is actually n over 4 times the square root of k over the mass of the spring. So for this particular system, I have a mass of the spring is 11.6 grams, um, and the k value I measured to be 1.15 uh, newtons per meter. And as a result, we get a fundamental frequency of about 5 hertz that's rounded slightly for the node-node system, and we get a fundamental frequency of about 2.5, so half that frequency, half the node-node frequency for the node-antinode uh, fundamental. And so the fundamentals are very hard to see because there's no nodes to look at, and so and that's what's easiest to see for these. So we can look at the second harmonic for um, oops, the second harmonic for a this is the node node. So we have a node here and we have a node down here. Okay. The third harmonic, so that's at about 10 hertz, it's slightly higher actually. So it's twice the fundamental. Three times the fundamental. 15.25 hertz it gives us a node. Now when it chatters like this, you know that it's not perfect. Um, we end up with an approximate node right here. It's pretty close, and it's kind of stabilizing now. And a node right here, and then a node right here. Versus anti-nodes here, here, here. So then if we look at the node anti-node system, so this, the third harmonic, because we only get the odds, is at about 7.5, and that's the one we looked at before, 7.5 hertz. So that's where we get a node here, and then antinode here and here. If we go to the fifth, so that's 5 times 2.5, because 2.5 is our fundamental. That's at 12.5 hertz. And this one is a little bit chattery. The LabQuest only goes up in increments of 0.25 hertz. So that's a node right there, and then I think our other node is right here. And so then we have antinode here, antinode here, antinode, antinode, node, antinode. See that node bumps is significantly less. So that is the basic workings of standing waves on a helical spring.